Hello, I'm a philosopher and metaphysician. I'm going to show you an invention that I came up with about six months ago. I call it the Maggi. It's a magnetic neodymium Yagi. What it uh, does is a per perpetual motion magnetic device that uh, uses the uh, the principles of the Yagi antenna as seen here on the right. You have the reflecting element, the driver element, and the director element, the smaller element is top. I'm a ham radio operator. I've been studying magnetism for some 20 years with a primarily a metaphysician and philosopher. Uh, this is a prototype unit. Uh, I've since uh, made a couple nicer Lexan units that I've sold, but this is a prototype that I came up with an idea that I had uh, several months ago. The center of this unit, in part two of this video series, I'm going to show you how to create this for $25. The uh, wire is a 10 gauge vinyl coated copper wire, you can get it at any hardware store. The center magnet is an N42 Gauss neodymium iron boron. Uh, since it's hard to see a sphere rotate, you can see it right now, it's rotating on its own. It will rotate 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, non-stop period. Sometimes it's imperceptible, sometimes it'll twitch and uh, move uh, significantly like it is right now. Uh, no, I did not touch this unit, nor am I hovering magnets near it. Uh, this is completely valid. It is logical. And uh, it is an idea that I came up with. You'll see the uh, the reflector unit here. I've had to experiment with the uh, copper length on uh, this. And uh, you see the director unit over here on the right. What it does is it uses the Earth's magnetic... Uh, envelope uh, as well as RFI and EMI, radio frequency interference and electromagnetic interference in our ambient uh, atmosphere. The only reason the iron filings are on this neodymium sphere which is suspended by a thin nylon uh, tape that is taped to the neodymium is to show the magnet actually turning and twitching uh, on its own and uh, of course this isn't by definition a true perpetual motion machine but it will move and twitch perpetually with no energy input other than a the earth's electromagnetic uh, envelope it's a magnetosphere uh, b rfi and uh, c uh, emi and uh, obviously any ambient electronics of which there are none near here absolutely everything other than the light bulb behind me and this camera are turned on as far as electronic devices I'm not feeding anything uh, into this Yagi uh, right now. Um, I'm going to show you part two of this video series, how to create this. This magnet does move perpetually. It uh, sometimes will twitch rather rapidly, oddly enough. I don't know if it's from uh, ambient electronic devices, but uh, it's on a completely stable uh, completely stable footing. There's absolutely nothing moving in it at all. This is uh, the example of what this is, the director and the reflector unit over here to the right. Uh, I got this idea when thinking about magnetics for many, 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 many years and uh, being a ham radio operator and uh, knew that you could use a Yagi antenna and uh, magnetism uh, to use a modified magnetic unit for a Yagi and incorporate a neodymium iron boron magnet in with a uh, Yagi antenna. I also got the idea from the Low Cool Tour uh, uh, barometric atmospheric clock. It's a, a very precise clock that uses uh, Earth's uh, barometric, uh, the atmospheric barometric pressure to actually wind the clock. So the actual barometric pressure actually winds through the atmospheric pressure, winds the bellows of the unit. I thought if I incorporated a Yagi antenna and experimented with the the uh, experimented with the the, uh, the reflector unit as seen here on the left, which is uh, I'm not going to give out the length right now. I had to experiment with that at great length and uh, experiment with the reflector length and uh, the director length. Uh, obviously, I found out that uh, N42 Gauss seems to be irrelevant. I've tried in the 50s and N38 uh, Gauss uh, neodymium iron boron magnets. Uh, for this neat little toy. I call it perpetual motion art. That is my definition of it. Uh, but it will move perpetually on its own. If you notice, you can see imperceptibly that I've actually mounted the nylon tape to the neodymium sphere at a slight kilter. You'll notice that the bottom thread is offset, offsetting the north and south sphere of the magnet by approximately 8 to 9 to 10 degrees. If you actually tape uh, the uh, magnet up perfectly north to south pole, 
Uh, it does not move as much, uh, if sometimes not at all. But uh, once again, I experimented greatly uh, with the, the driven element and uh, the director element to use that to pipe into the, for lack of a better term, the magnet itself, direct EMI and RFI and the Earth's uh, magnetic uh, ambient magnetosphere into the neodymium iron boron sphere at the center. Uh, as the uh, as a driven element so I have a reflector and a director out of the copper wires you see here on left and right but I'm using a neodymium iron boron the uh, sphere in the center as the driven element of a modified Yagi neodymium iron boron uh, receiver and uh, even though it is not by definition a true perpetual motion machine it is a uh, it will move perpetually. I've also experimented on another one using reflector directors um, out of uh, copper rings. You're actually able to do that with uh, um, uh, these are actually copper gaskets. Um, there have been a few times when I've actually come in and noticed an early morning, I don't know what it is, if it's electronic devices or radio frequency interference, the actual uh, uh, neodymium itself is, you know, twitching quite rapidly, but these are also, uh, makes it more artistic, it's kind of neat looking. I've uh, used these and already sold all of mine using these as the reflectors and, uh, and, uh, and directors as a Yagi. There's actually ham radio Yagis that actually use copper rings like this instead of aluminum tubing. But, in part two of this little video series, I'm going to show you how you can create, like, my, my, you know, uh, scratch from the bottom of the box, you know, uh, first prototype of a, the, what I call the Maggi, M-A-G-G-I, or a magnetic uh, Yagi. You can actually make this for roughly $25, and it's, you can literally make it in about a half an hour. The only finer points are, of course, the fact that it's going to take you a while to uh, get uh, get the uh, the antenna reflector and uh, director position properly so it will spin perpetually. Like I said, this is a three quarter inch N42 Gauss neodymium iron boron of which, like I said, the only reason I've attached the iron filings to is so that you can see it spin. It's cut, see it spin and twitch more clearly. You can actually see the reflective surface underneath the iron filings from the light behind me moving. But the iron filings are there so you can actually see the sphere twitch and spin. And like I said uh, at the beginning of this video, it will twitch and move perpetually, 24-7, without any input. Uh, I have this on a very solid footing, and no matter where I put it in the house, it will twitch and spin, some places better than others. But of course, like any antenna, which is used as a reflector, which is uh, which is a... Uh, it has a lobe of direction of receptability. Uh, you can actually use these for uh, on UHF and VHF hunts. You can use it for finding a specific output frequency. You can turn this entire box or whatever display you decide to put it into, and uh, you can actually turn the entire unit 360 degrees, and you can find out which direction, specifically degree that it's pointed at, will make the magnet spin more or less. So this is the neodymium iron boron that's using the center element of this Yagi that you see here to the right. But what I'm using is a neodymium to replace the driver element. So I have a director and I have a reflector. Reflector being the large element on the Yagi. And I have the director, the small element out of the copper wire. But I'm using a neodymium iron boron as the driven element on uh, what I call the, the Maggi. Anyway, part two of this series, I'll show you how to create this. This is uh, not a joke. This is not uh, internet hokum. This is real. There's uh, a great deal of science and logic and insight on my behalf of thinking of this. Of course, this is a very crude prototype. But it does work. And once you get it tuned properly, just like the uh, barometric pressure local tour clock, which uses barometric pressure for winding uh, the clock, uh, you're actually able to use a modified Yagi antenna with the neodymium at center point for a perpetual, uh, perpetual uh, motion piece of art. So check out part two on how to quickly and easily make this for uh, $25 or less.